thank God, and we welcome you again to the Back to Basics Ministries live online church where we uh, visit with you for about 45 minutes, bring you the word of God, pray with you. Uh, at the end of the service, we have testimonies and questions and answers, and we just thank God that this great ministry, Back to Basics Ministries, we're here to stand in the gap for this nation and nations. We're here to stand in the gap for this nation and the nations. And as we look across the board and see how our nation is going south and the nations are going south and many have turned from the Lord, we know that we're in the last days. These are the last days. The scripture says that in the last days there will be a great apostasy great apostasy. Apostasy is a word that means that many people will turn from God. But neighbor, I pray that you will not turn from God, but in these last days, draw near unto the Lord with all your heart, with all your heart. It is so crucial, so imperative, so important that you draw near unto the Lord with all your heart. We don't have time for any foolishness. We don't have time for anything that would take us away from God. So neighbor, I beg you, draw unto the Lord through Jesus Christ. Be alert, be diligent, be vigilant, and trust the Lord with all your heart. Today, I'm going to teach on a message that I believe is going to bless you, going to bless your family. I believe that this message today will bless you for the rest of your life. And the principles that the Holy Ghost will give me to teach today will bless you so mightily that each day you'll build upon it, you'll compound it and draw nearer to the Lord. I'm going to teach today on the message, how to hear from God, how to hear from God. Well, let's set the scenario. Let's set the scenario. The scripture teaches us about a man named Habakkuk. He was a prophet of God. <clears throat> and Habakkuk had a burden. And the word burden means he was heavily loaded with what's happening, God, what's going on. God, I, I'm, I'm burdened with, with the sins of the people. I'm burdened with my concerns about my nation. I'm burdened with my concerns about my family and loved ones. And even in Habakkuk's case, for future generations, Habakkuk is saying, God, what is going to happen to my nation Israel? You see, Habakkuk lived in a time where Israel was in great sin, great backsliding. Israel rejected the prophets, the preachers. Israelites uh, wanted to do their own thing. They were proud people. They were stubborn. They were stiff-necked. Sounds like Americans today. They didn't care what prophet or what preacher God sent their way. They were determined that they were going to live their own lives. Even the priests, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at 8th century B.C., Israel. Even the priests were committing sin, committing adultery, <clears throat> having sex with, with, the, uh, with the, the whores who hung, hung out in the temple. I mean, even the priests were 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 infested. And God needed people to call upon the nation to repent. God was sending a message of love, God's love message. I love you. Some of you are looking forward to Valentine's Day. Well, here's a message. God says, I love you. Jesus says, I love you so much that I stretched on the cross and died for you. God's message to America, to the nations, to Sweden, to Kenya, to uh, Nigeria, to uh North Korea, to China, to Israel. God's message is, I love you. And if you will turn to me, if you will repent of your sins, I will bless you. I will save you. I will deliver you. Why can't people receive this message? Why are people so stubborn and so stuck on doing things their own way? Why have people turned their backs on the Lord? This ministry, Back to Basics ministry, is all about taking people back to the basics. We want you to go back 
to the basics. And the basics is Psalm um, 139, 14. I will praise the Lord because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God made us in his image to worship him. But Satan has corrupted the human race and has caused people to do everything and anything that their minds can imagine that, that are contrary to God. And so God is saying to the people, return to me, come back to me, come back to me, return to me, repent of your sins. And if you will confess your sins and return to me, I will receive you. I will forgive you. I will restore you. I will bless you. I will save you. I will give you eternal life. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that plain and simple. <clears throat> but we have so many people who have a spirit of contention. They don't have a teachable spirit. They like to argue. They, some, some, some people are so, so proud of their little degrees that they've got. They went to school four years or six years or eight years or some went to school, uh, went to college one day and think they know everything. But, but God is saying, no, 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 no. Let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And so God is pleading with us through the prophets to return to him. And so he sent Habakkuk along with so many others. Habakkuk was a contemporary with Isaiah, Jeremiah, and uh, so many others, Zephaniah, Haggai. And Habakkuk pleaded with the people, return to the Lord, repent of your sins, stop doing what you're doing. And so the people uh, stoned many of the prophets. They stoned them to death. They took Isaiah and stuffed Isaiah into a hollowed out tree trunk and sawed the tree trunk in half and cut the man of God into two pieces. Ladies and gentlemen, that's how they treated God's messengers. And God's messengers today are being mistreated. In many nations, people are being put to death, persecuted because they love Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, God wants us to love him even unto death because he has eternal life for us. God does not want us to turn back because of adverse circumstances. Now, Satan is so full of tricks and he's he's. He's influencing so many people to turn away from God. He's using everything in the book, in his book, to try to turn people back from God. And you and I must make a decision, ladies and gentlemen. We must make a decision to stick with God, not to turn back. And if you sin, the scripture gives us a formula. If you sin, confess your sins. Confess your sins. God is faithful to forgive you and to restore you unto righteousness. So don't be stubborn. Don't be stiff-necked. If you sin, confess your sin. Don't try to cover up. Don't like. Don't be like they're doing in Washington, D.C., all these committees, all these hearings, and, and months after months after months after a fingerprinting and lying and denying and, and blaming someone else. Ladies and gentlemen, fess up. When you stand before God, Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you if you do not confess your sins. So fess up, man up, and say, God, I've sinned against you. I've sinned against you. I've, ba I've had bad thoughts about people. I've talked about people. I've not done right. I've disobeyed you. I've got secret sins, secret lust. I've been walking in my own pride, my own understanding. Just repent. And repent means to turn from it. Cast yourself on the mercy of God and ask God, Lord, forgive me. Save me. Save me. You'll say, well, I'm already saved. I got baptized when I was 13. Al contraire, as they say in France. Baptism does not save you. Well, I've been in church ever since I was a baby. They christened me in the church. I was raised in a Christian family. No, that does not make you a Christian. The Bible says you must be born again. You must be born again. Well, how can I be born again? The scripture gives an answer to that. We're talking about back to basics ministries, getting back to God. The scripture says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Confess him in your heart. Believe that God raised him from the dead and then start doing works of righteousness. 
works of repentance. Turn from that sin. Turn from whatever that sin is that so easily besets you and pulls you down. And trust in the Lord with all your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, Habakkuk, like many prophets, had a burden for the people. He loved his people so much, he did not want to see anyone perish. And God loves this world so much that he doesn't want anyone to perish. He gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. And he wants us to draw unto him, to surrender our lives unto him. You may say, but I'm too old. I'm too old to change. No, I'll contraire. You are never too old to change. You can get into the kingdom of God today. You can be 90 years old, about to take your last breath. You can be 100 years old, about to take your last breath. You can be 50 years old, about to take your last breath, but you can be saved if you ask the Lord Jesus to forgive you of your sins and ask him to become your savior and Lord. You can be saved today and God will erase all of the iniquities, all the sins you have ever committed. He will have no record. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about a loving God, a loving father whose will is that nobody should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But if you do not repent, if you do not humble yourself, if you do not call upon the name of the Lord, there's no way you can be saved. You can't walk the fence. You can't straddle the fence. You can't smoke your dope. You can't run with your, your neighbor's wife. You can't uh, abuse little children and go to church at the same time and say, I'm all right because I go to church. Ladies and gentlemen, millions of people are in church right now, all across America, all across Europe. Well, they're about six, year, six hours ahead of us in Europe. All over the globe, people have attended church today. And people believe that because they have attended church, everything's all right with God. Ladies and gentlemen, all contraire, you must be born again. You must be born. That is the condition. That is the condition. Back to Basics Ministries, we preach this condition. You must be born again. You can't get into heaven based on what your mother did or what your father did. Your grandfather could have founded the church. Your grandmother could have been a foreign missionary, but you can't get into heaven based on what they have done. You must make a decision for yourself. You must make a choice for yourself. And so we beg you, beg you, beg you to draw unto Jesus Christ and be diligent, be vigilant, be careful whose voice you listen to. Be careful what they're, they're teaching or what they're preaching. The Bible shows us the way. Ladies and gentlemen, so many people are depending on others to approach God for them. So many people are depending on others to seek God for them. And so today, I want to give you a brief message, a brief message on how to hear God's voice, how to hear God's voice. It is important, ladies and gentlemen. And if you get this message and, and get the video, I'll, I'll get the video. It's available. It will be available in a few hours on my website, www.backtobasicsministry.wordpress.com. It's available. Get the video, ladies and gentlemen, or email me. Uh, Leroy Carter 69 at yahoo.com or call me 404-205-1101. We want you to be saved. And if you have questions, we'd be glad to answer your questions. We're all about preaching the gospel and getting men and women saved, uh, growing in Christ and getting people ready for the last days for Jesus's return. He's coming back. He's coming back, ladies and gentlemen. He's coming back. Don't have any excuse. If you're not saved, there's no excuse. The Bible says in Romans, thou art inexcusable, O man. There be no excuse. Jesus will say, depart from me. I never knew you, but you can get to know him. So draw an eye unto him, ladies and gentlemen. Praise God, ladies and gentlemen. We preach this message to all people. Doesn't matter what color you are, what background you come from, what nation you're in doesn't matter what church you attend. Ladies and gentlemen, you can go to church all day long every Sunday. 
But if you're not born again, if you're not saved, you're going to go to hell. So God has provided a way. He sent messengers. He sent prophets. He sent teachers and preachers to show you the way to him. Ladies and gentlemen, get saved while you have time. And once you get saved, stay saved. Stay saved. Don't cross over to the dark side. Don't give in to money. Don't give in to worldly pleasures. Don't give in to materialism. Stay saved. For the scripture says, what does a man profit if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So many people are losing their soul because of money and fame. Now in America today, there are a lot of people all over this nation because the Super, Super Bowl is going to be played tonight. And there are a lot of people, they're sitting up in church. They've got their Philadelphia Eagles gear on. They've got their uh, New England Patriots gear. I mean, they're letting everybody know, I'm an Eagles fan. I got my Eagles shirt on, my jacket and all of this. Ladies and gentlemen, beware of idols. Beware of idols. Churches are full of people today wearing football shirts and football caps and this and that. Ladies and gentlemen, beware of idols. Don't let anything, no team, no football team, no basketball team, no person, no man, woman, demon, or beast be preeminent over Jesus Christ. Don't let anything be prominent in your mind or in your heart other than Jesus. God does not want you worshiping idols. There's a place for football shirts. There's a place for cheering for your favorite team. But when it comes to worshiping God, don't go to church to impress people that you follow a certain team and you wear a certain shirt or a certain uh, insignia. No, go to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says, seek me and you shall find me and you shall find me when you seek me with your whole heart. Don't let anything or anyone separate you from the love of God. Ladies and gentlemen, let's pray. Father, we bless you and praise you and thank you and honor you. Father God, there is no other God but you. We worship you. We welcome the presence of the Holy Spirit. We cannot do anything without you, Holy Spirit. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, Lord, I ask that you direct us in this ministry today. Bless the people. Help them to hear your voice. Help them to hear you, God. Help us to repent of our sins, to turn from every wicked way. Help us to uh, cast down all vain imaginations. Help us to uh, be so totally into you, Lord God. Father, these are the last days. We need you. Only you can save us. So, Father, we ask that you stretch forth your mighty hand all over the globe and draw men and women into the kingdom of God. Holy Spirit, Wherever men and women are call upon, calling upon the name of the Lord, draw them into the presence of the Lord. Get the attention of the people, Lord. Get the attention, God. We trust you, Holy Spirit, that as we preach the word of God, you will do a great work, a great work in the hearts of the people. Forgive us all of our sins and cleanse us of all iniquities and unrighteousness. And I thank you, Father. Bless this message today. <clears throat> well, we want to talk about just in a couple more minutes how to hear God's voice. And what I give you, what the Holy Spirit has given me, is a four step plan. A four step plan for how you can hear God's voice. And, if, and I hope you'll write these down. I hope you'll get the video and review the video over and over again and get the plan. The plan is how to hear God's voice voice four steps these four steps you see here's the situation there are millions of people who call themselves Christians there are millions of people who say praise the Lord they know the right things to say they know the right things to do people know how to be churchy they know how to act religious but many of them are being blown away in their daily lives because they, they love Jesus on Sunday. But Monday through Saturday, they don't know what to do. They're making poor decisions. They have poor relationships. They're, uh, some of them are living in dens of iniquity. 
Some work in, in, in hell factories. And it's easy to be a Christian on Sunday. But to be a Christian means you're a Christian every day of the week, every second of your life from now until Jesus comes. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And a lot of people are being blown away because many of them are not being properly taught. I thank God for the preachers, the pastors, the evangelists, the missionaries who are teaching the word of God. I thank God for those who labor uh, throughout the week, every day of the week, teaching the word of God. I thank God for the intercessors, the prayer warriors. I thank you for thank God for the many people walking in love and exemplifying the love of Jesus Christ. But then there are millions of people. They do not study the word of God. They don't read their Bibles. They don't uh, pray. They don't have any prayer life. We've got churches. I can tell you some denominations, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, their churches are full today because they, they know how to do church. They know how to have church. They're doing church right now. All around us, they're doing church right now. But there's a difference between doing church and worshiping God. Because a lot of those folks around us today right now who are doing church, when church is over, when the service is over, they go back to the same old, same old, same old way of thinking, same old hating on people, same old contentious spirit, same old stubborn and, and proud spirits bumbling through this world, uh, same old people mistreating one another, same old people hating on one another. Ladies and gentlemen, this should not be because the scripture says if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Then many people do not know how to hear God's voice. You will say, do you pray? Oh, yes, I pray. But it takes more than just now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take and then dash off to uh, sleep or dash off to your job or, or, or run uh, throughout this world uncovered. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to be covered by the blood of Jesus. We need to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We need to be in fellowship with the Lord all the day long. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're a born again believer, if you're a Christian, then you ought to have a relationship with God. It's mind blowing to know the many people, the millions of people who say they're Christians and have no prayer life. Many denominations do not teach people how to pray. Many people are, here's how they are in many nations. They will call somebody who they think is spiritual and say, pray for me. All over Facebook, all over Twitter, all over the social media, we see people saying, pray for me. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to learn how to pray for yourself. I'm not going to depend on anybody to pray for me. Only Jesus Christ, who is the intercessor, he sits on the right hand of the throne of God right now, and he makes intercession for all of us, and I'm depending on him to pray for me. I'm depending on the Holy Spirit to pray for me and pray in me and through me, but I'm not going to depend on any person on the face of this earth to pray for me, because if you depend on others, they may say, yes, I'll pray for you, and they won't pray, or the prayer they pray is a generic prayer. Lord, bless Johnny Jones, bless Wil Wilbur Smith, bless uh, uh, Miss Johnson, and that's their prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, we need more than this. We need more than generic prayers. We need to have a relationship with God. A relationship with God means that we're wedded to Jesus Christ. We're engaged. We're betrothed to Jesus Christ. And when he comes back, he's coming for his bride. Now, ladies and gentlemen, listen to this. How can Jesus come back for his bride, the one he's going to marry and present to his father at the great wedding feast in heaven? How can he come back for us if he doesn't know us? Think about it. Many of you are married or have been married and you, you 
if you're a woman, you recorded. If you're a man, you courted that woman and you gave her your best. You talked your best rap. You talked your best stuff. I mean, you put your best game down and you put your best side out there uh, to win that heart. And you got married and and marriage uh, is and your marriage is flourishing because you share communications with one another. It's a sad marriage where there's no communication. I've seen poor communications in marriages. I've seen men in in grocery stores pushing the grocery cart while the woman's walking ahead of him, talking on the cell phone and pointing to him at the at the shelves to get this and get that. And he's walking around looking dumb, pushing the grocery cart. He has no input whatsoever, that no communication whatsoever, no relationship whatsoever. He's just pushing the shopping cart and she's talking to her girlfriend or her mama or somebody on the cell phone. Her spirit is removed from his. I've seen men and women sitting at the same dinner table, ladies and gentlemen, married couples. She's staring at the wall. She, she can't even look at him. He won't even look at her. He's watching TV. And, and and they're sitting at the same table. I've seen them in restaurants. Uh, she's staring at the wall. He's texting somebody on his cell phone. Ladies and gentlemen, there we're talking about communication. If you say you love someone, you ought to have communication. You ought to be able to look that person in the eye. You ought to do all you can to build that person up and sustain that person and, and reinforce that love. Even if you don't have anything to say, a little wink a little hug, a little smile. And Jesus is looking for a response from a lot of us. Millions of people are in church right now. They sit up in church, they go through the motion, hallelujah, praise God, thank you, Jesus, because that's what they think you're supposed to do in church. Or the preacher's preaching and they say, amen, word, say that, true that, yeah, preach real. Ladies and gentlemen, this grieves the heart of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus is looking for hearts that will seek him, that will commune with him, that will fellowship with him. He's seeking people who will talk to him. He's seeking people who will listen to him. Most of prayer, ladies and gentlemen, most of prayer is us saying what's on our heart or what's in our mind. And once we say it, that's the end of prayer. Ladies and gentlemen, prayer is a two-way street. If you say you love the Lord and you're gonna be married to Jesus, you're gonna spend eternity with him, then why don't you take some time out now and get to know Jesus? Why don't you take time out and find out what's in his heart? First of all, you can find out what's in his heart by reading the Bible, studying the word of God from Genesis to Revelation. You can get God's heart. You can ask God to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and study his word. But a lot of people are just too blessed God lazy. They let other things take their, their time, but most are just plain lazy and, and, uh, and don't read the scripture, don't study the scripture. And most are depending on what they hear the preacher preach on Sunday. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're depending on what you hear the preacher preach on Sunday, you're getting blown away Monday through Saturday. Your life must be a mess. I know I, your life must be a big pretense. If you're not studying your word, you're not praying, you're not growing in Christ, and that is why Satan is blowing people away all over the world, and they call themselves Christians. That's why Europe is almost dead. Christianity is almost dead in Europe. Christianity is almost dead in America. 80% of Americans do not even attend church. Now, I told you earlier, attending church does not save you. But at least if you go to church, you, there's a possibility you can get saved if the gospel is being preached. If we hang out with people who have like minds and who love the Lord, that's very important. Don't let se Satan separate you from the body of Christ. Tamara says in the 
prayer in the chat window. Study the word so you won't be blown away Monday through Saturday. Amen. Amen, Tamara. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants you to hear his voice. God wants us to take time out. Everybody ought to have quality time with the Lord every day. Don't just wait until you get sick and call on Jesus. Don't wait until you get broke, busted, or disgusted and call on Jesus. Don't wait until you get arrested and thrown in jail and call on Jesus. Well, most guys, most men, when they get locked up, they're not going to call on Jesus right away. The first one they're calling on, mama, because I tell you, when you get thrown in jail and those brothers start, uh, 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 their lips start drooling when they see you, oh, fresh meat, fresh tuna. When they see you come in, uh, uh, you're going to call on, if you don't know Jesus, you're going to call on your mama, but your mama can't save you. That's why you need to leave that crime alone. Leave that crime alone. When you get in jail and those brothers start hitting on you, mama can't save you. You better know Jesus Christ. And if you know Jesus Christ, you don't even need to do the crime. God is wanting people to call on him. He wants us to pray. He wants us to open our hearts to him. But ladies and gentlemen, just like the man and the woman at the dinner table, he put down a whole lot of stuff before they got married. I mean, he told her how pretty she was. I called her sugar, sugar, sweet thing, gave her candy and flowers, took her out to dinner, bought her fine things. And now he doesn't even have a nice thing to say to her. He can't even look her in her eye. What kind of marriage is that? Or she told him how handsome he was and, and how good looking he was. And she bragged to her girlfriends how good looking her, her boyfriend was. And now she can't even look at you at the dinner table. That is poor marriage. No communication whatsoever. Well, how can you say you're married to Jesus Christ and you don't talk to him regularly? You won't even know what to do when he heaven, if, should you get there? Come on, somebody. God wants to reveal to you the things of the kingdom. He says, I know the plans that I have for you. Eyes have not seen nor have ears heard what I have in store for them that love me. But if you don't know God's plan, you haven't studied his word. You're not praying. You're not listening to his voice. You're going to be lost in the shuffle. We need to hear from God daily so that we get the game plan. We need to hear the Holy Spirit. You see, when you're born again, the Holy Spirit takes up residence inside of you. He lives in you. The Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The Holy Spirit begins to live in you. He begins to talk to you. He wants your attention. He wants you to hear his voice. But most Christians are so busy trying to make money, trying to do this, uh, 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 getting ready for the Super Bowl or the big game. Uh, they're so busy, busy, busy working two or three jobs that they don't take time. Most Christians don't take time or have good quality worship time where they can talk to God and listen to God. It's just like marriages. If you're going to have a strong marriage, it must it must be contingent upon good communications. If you're going to have a successful marriage, your marriage must be built on strong communication. There are times when we men ought to just shut up and let our wives talk and be not be just listeners, but hearers also. I'm still practicing this. I have not arrived, but I'm working on it. Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when women ought to just shut up. Just shut your mouth and, and let the man say something that's on his mind. Some men get cut off at the pass. They start saying something, and she finishes what he tries to say. Let the man express himself. We're talking about communication. We're talking about courtesy in our marriage. We're talking about courtesy in our conversation. Uh, most conversations Ladies and gentlemen, are when one person says something, the other person is already making his or her defense. They already know what they want to say, and most people don't get a chance 
to express what they really wanted to say because they get cut off, they get corrected, they get edited, they get redacted, they get shut out. And God's feeling the same way. He's feeling the same way. It must grieve God to look down on this world and see all these so-called churches where people go through all the all the motions and the emotions. They know when to lift their hands. If the if the worship leader says, lift your hands, everybody lifts their hands. If the worship leader says, say amen, somebody's going to say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, we're not talking about uh, God does not want puppets or mechanics. He wants people who worship him with their whole heart and who talk to him and who spend quality time each day hearing his voice. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe in my heart that most believers, most believers, most that I've met do not have a real program whereby they listen to God. Most Christians don't know God's voice. That's why when you ask a person, what are you going to do? I don't know. Pray for me. I don't know what to do. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you ought to know what to do. If you talk to God and pray, and if you take the time out and wait on the Lord and listen, he will show you what to do. He said in his word, he said in Isaiah 33, 3, call unto me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. So we have Habakkuk in, in the backdrop of violence, spoiling, strife, contentions, violating the law, injustice, the wicked oppressing the righteous, the priests committing adultery with the whores, Judah and Israel in a sinful condition, with that backdrop, Habakkuk is asking the Lord, Lord, what's going to happen to your people? Lord, what's going to happen to your people? Lord, why do the righteous uh, become persecuted and the wicked prosper? Why all this injustice? Why all this violence? What's going to happen? It sounds like the way some of us are crying out in America today or in your nation today. And let's learn from Habakkuk about how to hear God's voice. I will give you four points. Learn these four points and practice them. And you'll notice a big change in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, we've taught this course in the Paul Begley School of Prophecy to our first semester students. Their lives have changed. I've got testimonies, stacks of testimonies of people whose lives have changed because they're receiving they have received these four principles that I'm about to give you today. Habakkuk said, as he approached the Lord, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer him when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tablets that he may run that reads it for the vision is yet for the appointed time but if but in the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry ladies and gentlemen habakkuk with his heavy burden for the people watching people being destroyed Nebuchadnezzar is on the verge of coming in to destroy all of Israel. Israel has been uh, uh, judged. And Habakkuk wants to know, God, what are you going to do with your people? We have sinned against you. We know punishment is coming. What's going to happen to the people? Are the wicked going to prosper and prevail? What about those people who are still righteous, Lord? What about all this violence, all this stealing and lying and corruption? What about this fake government, all this, the falsehoods in the government? What about the fake priests? What about the people going through the motions, pretending they love you? What about the people being deceived by the religious leaders? Lord, what are you going to do about this? This was Habakkuk's burden. 
And he said, I'm going to stand on my watchtower. I'm going to be like a soldier. I'm going to get on my guard post. I'm going to stand on the rampart, my position, and I'm going to watch to see what he will speak to me. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I'm going to watch to see what he'll speak to me. I'm going to be vigilant and diligent to see what God is going to speak to me. In other words, Habakkuk knows that the answer to his problem is going to come from God, and he's determined. He's got the right attitude, ladies and gentlemen. He's got a pure heart, a teachable spirit, the right attitude. He says, I'm coming to you, Lord. I'm going to lay my problem before you, and I'm going to watch to see what you're going to say to me. How many people do you know who take the time out after they throw up their little quick prayer to God? How many people take the time out to watch and see what God will say to him? God is like the husband pushing the grocery cart around the store while the wife talks on the cell phone and points to stuff in the aisle and tells the husband, with a snap of her fingers, put this in the grocery cart. God is like that husband. He has no part of the process other than to push that grocery cart. Ladies and gentlemen, God is getting sick and tired of pushing the grocery cart while we tell him what to do, while we pick and choose what we want to do, and we don't give him any input in our lives. That is why so many lives are messed up. That's why so many people are not healed. That's why so many people are bound and burdened. That's why nations are going down the tube, ladies and gentlemen. That's why this nation is on the brink of war and the world is on the brink of war because no one wants to listen to God. But we can learn a lesson from Habakkuk because God did answer Habakkuk because God gave, because Habakkuk gave God the respect and the honor and the time. Habakkuk realized that if any change is going to come, it must come from you, God, because we don't have the answers. And he called upon the name of the Lord and he waited on the Lord. And God gave Habakkuk the answer to his situation. Ladies and gentlemen, there are four things you need to do. Write these down. If you want to hear from God, and God wants to talk to you. God wants to show you how he wants to change your life. God wants to show you the answer to your situation. God wants to fellowship with you. He wants to commune with you. God just wants to talk. He wants to talk to some of them. Some of you have never heard his voice. You say, well, the preacher preached, but did he preach the word of God? Everything the preacher is preaching is not the word of God, ladies and gentlemen. I don't care who that preacher is. Everything coming out the preacher's mouth is not the word of God. Even I know as a preacher, some things that come out of my mouth are my own thoughts. But God wants people to hear his voice. That is why as a believer, you're not to depend on any preacher. When God brought Israel out, out of Egypt, told Moses, bring the people to Mount Sinai so that I can speak to them. God spoke to the whole congregation of Israel. He spoke to over 2 million people at one time. The mountain was uh, uh, smoky. It was shaking and there was trembling. There was lightning all around the place because the spirit of God showed up and God spoke to the people. And the people were so afraid when they heard, heard God's voice. They swore at that time, we don't ever want God to speak to us again. Let him speak to you, Moses. That's how preaching came about. But ladies and gentlemen, every preacher is not obedient as Moses. Some put their own twist on what God says. Some say God said this and God didn't say anything. Some manufacture words from God. Some take the scriptures and manipulate the scriptures. So you need to know God's voice for yourself. You need to know. We're living in the last days. You need to know Satan is trying to distort the voice of God. He's trying to prevent you from hearing from God. You need to know God for yourself. And so here are four things you can do to hear the voice of God. 
Number one, quiet yourself. Write that down. Quiet yourself. Then study these a little later. Number one, quiet yourself. Number two, look for spontaneity or look for spontaneous thoughts. Number one, quiet yourself. Number one, quiet yourself. Number two, look for spontaneous thoughts. Spontaneous thoughts are, you're gonna hear voice a voice. You're gonna hear words. These are spontaneous thoughts. Hold on to them. This is God speaking to you. Number three, look for vision. Look for vision. Look to see God. Look to see Jesus as you pray. Look to see Jesus as you pray. Let Jesus Christ be over all as you pray. Look for vision. God will show you things. Number four, write the vision. Write the vision. I'm going to continue with this next week how to hear God's voice. But you study these four principles this week and practice them. Number one, quiet yourself. You've got to learn how to quiet yourself down. You've got to learn how to cast out those demonic spirits. You've got to learn how to shut up those demons. You've got to get to a quiet place. You can't hear from God with the TV on or with your cell phone on, or you can't hear from God uh, while you're texting your girlfriend. You can't hear from God uh, while you're pushing pushing a a, a uh, cart through the supermarket trying to make choices on what's in the aisles. You must quiet yourself. Find a quiet place. Tell your family you're in prayer. Don't let anything, not even the telephone, interrupt you. So number one, quiet yourself. Number two, look for spontaneous thoughts. When you quiet yourself, then you'll start hearing the thoughts of God. Look for vision. God may, if he doesn't speak to you in an audible voice, in a still small voice inside your mind, he will give you a picture. God will give you a picture. He'll give you a vision. Don't be afraid when God does that. And then number four, journal or write the vision. Write down the words you heard. Write down what pictures God showed you. And then don't rush and tell anybody else about it. You stay before the Lord and ask the Lord, what does this mean? We're going to stop right here. How to hear God's voice. I'll continue next week because I believe it's important that you get these principles. Study these four principles. Study Habakkuk chapter 2. One to three, and then maintain your prayer life. Learn how to talk to God, but learn how to hear his voice. Give him time to speak at the dinner table. Give him time to speak in the supermarket. Give him time to speak. He wants to say things. He said, call unto me. I will answer you. I'll show you great and mighty things which you know not. Well, praise God. Praise God. We're continuing with these principles next week. We're going to talk about Habakkuk next week, and we're going, to, we're going to go over the top. Praise God. To God be the glory. Now, if any of you are not saved, none of these principles I teach will work. You must be born again. You must be born again. In order to hear God's voice, you must be born again. God will speak to you and tell you to get saved. He'll tell you, don't go that way but you must be born again to have a relationship with him and hear his voice. So receive Jesus Christ. Get your family saved. Talk to your friends and neighbors about salvation. And then later you can teach them the principles that you're learning at Back to Basics Ministries. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. We're going to sign out our uh, Facebook family. We're going to sign out with you first. And you can contact me on Facebook. I'll be glad to answer your questions. And thank you so much for being with us today. And then for the Go to Meet Me family, praise God, we're going to stop the recording. But we're also going to keep our phones open. So that if you want to unmute your phone and talk with me, 